So the Afghanistan government and the Taliban are just days away from announcing a historic peace deal. American officials have been negotiating with the Taliban for months now. This peace deal, if it comes through, does have far-reaching implications, not just for that country, but certainly for the wider region. And more importantly, if it doesn't come through, it could likely have a major negative fallout as well. And all of this has a bearing, not just for the region, but certainly has a bearing for India as well. Let's try and get a ringside view of what this may mean, given the current circumstances in Afghanistan, the security situation, the wider implications. Let's get a ringside view from a man who is very much an insider uh, to what's been happening in Afghanistan, uh, both with this peace process as well as, of course, the wider security situation in that country. Joining us now for a very rare television interview is Mohammad Masoom Stanikzai. He's the chief of the National Directorate of Security, the highest intelligence agency in Afghanistan. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Stanikzai, for speaking with us here on uh, CNN's India affiliate, CNN News 18. I know you very rarely give television interviews, so I really do appreciate uh, you speaking with us here on CNN News 18. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 please go ahead. All right. Uh, I want to start off by asking you, what is your assessment as the head of the country's intelligence agency? What is your assessment of the current security situation in your country? Uh, we all see what, what is happening in the news, whether it's the attacks that have happened recently in Kunduz or uh, just a few days ago at the wedding party in Kabul. What, is, what in your assessment is the realistic security situation in your country right now? Um, thank you very much. Uh, I think when you uh, assess the security situation from a different angle, from a different perception part of you, it is different. Uh, when it comes to the number of incidents or the individual incident happens, it seems that, yes, it is a challenging situation. There are uh, so many of the terrorist networks that are based outside Afghanistan, but are uh, carrying out some of the attacks inside Afghanistan. It is uh, the suffering of the, causing the suffering of the Afghan people. But on the other hand, uh, when I am seeing that uh, uh, in 2014, when the bulk of the international forces left Afghanistan and then the Afghan security forces resume its responsibility, I think uh, uh, today, when I'm seeing the, the response to these incidents and the ability of the Afghan security forces in their coordination, their response, their quick action, and also to prevent a majority of the, of, uh, the act of the tourist networks that is operating in different parts of the country, uh, I'm, uh, I'm confident that we will be able over a, uh, over, over a medium time period that we will manage the situation, but it depends on uh, many other aspects uh, that uh, we can explain during the interview. Uh, I just want to elaborate on this point. You as, are you suggesting that compared to 2014, your country is witnessing A, fewer attacks by these disparate terrorist groups, uh, B, you're saying that the ability of your forces to respond to these attacks has improved, and are you also suggesting that many of these attacks, not just the number of these attacks, but certainly the potency of these attacks has also come down? I'm saying that uh, in uh, many places, uh, initially when the level of violence was high by the response of uh, Afghan security forces and after the initial uh, kind of uh, uh, taking the burden of the security responsibility in 2014-15 and that uh, our forces were very thinly spread and uh, uh, I think uh, to fight against these uh, sophisticated tourist network, uh, our ability has increased significantly but at the same time uh, the diversity and also other uh, elements uh, the, of uh, broader beyond Afghanistan, the region, uh, uh, that also had an impact, uh, the, the, the situation in the Middle East. Uh, also had a very direct impact on the l level of violence here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we do know, and, and certainly for a number of months now, we're given to understand that uh, we're just days away from a peace, peace deal between the Taliban and your government. A, uh, how hopeful are you that such a peace deal will come through in a matter of days? And B, if it does indeed come through, what may the fallout of that be uh, on your country? 
I think uh, you know that uh, the the peace um, issue is, uh, and for a long time, that the Afghan government, the Afghan people, more than anyone else, want the peace to return to Afghanistan. Not only peace, but the stability to return. Uh, and uh, I think uh, the beginning of this peace uh, process in a very serious manner started the, the, during the Kabul conference when His Excellency, the President of Afghanistan, has announced uh, unconditional, uh, 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 non-conditional situation for beginning of the peace, uh, the peace efforts. And that was also followed uh, with a number of Ulama conferences that was uh, followed that that it is both from a social, political, economic in Afghan's point of view, this is uh, something it is in the interest of Afghanistan, it is in the interest of the whole region, and also internationally. And this is why the continuation of violence in the fatwas of our ulama is illegitimate to continue violence while there is room and there is opportunity for the Afghans to enter into a direct talks. The real talk and the real uh, uh, peace deal will be when the talk between the Afghan government and the, and the Taliban starts. That is where we will, we, will, we will have to discuss the key issue and challenges that how Afghans themselves should uh, see the future of our country. Uh, and uh, and that, is, uh, that is the real peace uh, dialogue that will be, uh, we are looking forward to that. Uh, uh, just, just to but elaborate the current, on that point, because what we have seen in the, in the run up to this potential peace deal being announced uh, is there has been a, an increased number of attacks. We've seen that deadly attack that happened at the wedding party in Kabul a few days ago. Uh, we've seen what happened in Kunduz more recently. Uh, the feeling in the international community and the view in the international community is this is the Taliban flexing its muscle uh, to get a more favorable peace deal. And they know that the Americans want to withdraw. They know that Donald Trump uh, is pitching his re-election on the drawdown of troops. Therefore, this is the Taliban's way of flexing its, its, its muscle ahead of that peace deal. Would you agree with that assessment? Um. Basically, I agree with part of it, but I will not agree with the whole of it because I agree with part of it because, yes, the Taliban and their supporters are uh, pushing more violence and they want to show that, yes, they are present, they can do. Uh, uh, that kind of attack can, can happen in any place. If uh, as somebody with a suicide vest entering into the, uh, the, the uh, uh, announcing uh, uh, civilian people in a wedding where children, women, and everybody is there, to celebrate their new life and, and, and then somebody explode themselves, whether you think this is a strength or whether this is a weakness, because this is uh, how they are showing themselves that they are just a machine for killing people. And uh, I think uh, in, from another point of view, when there is a peace talks has started, when there is uh, there is issue that we have to achieve peace, then where is a legitimate reason for continuation of the violence? And this is also from a Sharia point of view, from an Islamic point of view, and also from a humanitarian point of view. Continuing this violence while you are talking about withdrawal, we're talking about, uh, about uh, peace, we're talking about intra-Afghan dialogue, so then there is a bigger question that anyone who are killed after those talks are started, it is the direct responsibility of the Taliban. And I think one day people of Afghanistan will ask them that why they have continued this and why they were not able to respond the legitimate request of the Afghan people during many, many, many uh, uh, gathering of the elders, the youth, the women, the Taliban themselves from the rank and file, that there should be a ceasefire before you are getting to, the, to conclude the, the peace deal, because that will allow all sides in order to re really save the lives. Because every Afghan, every leader in any side who are uh, who are involved there, who have the responsibility. They have a responsibility for the life of every single individual of this country. Uh, you did refer to, uh, very briefly in the earlier part of this interview, about outside forces, about terrorist groups getting sanctuary uh, outside of your country. Uh, we do know that President Ghani, ever since he took office five years ago, has been constantly telling every possible international fora that the Pakistanis are playing a double game. We have had a situation now in the last few weeks with uh, the, U the, the U.S. president, uh, no less than the U.S. president, saying that the Pakistanis will bring uh, the Taliban on board or, or to the table for this peace deal. 
Are you and your government, Mr. Stanek Zai, convinced that the ISI, which is the Pakistani intelligence agency, or the Pakistani establishment itself, is doing everything it can in the best interests of Afghanistan, or is the truth to the contrary? I think this is uh, an issue that uh, I should say that in the past uh, few years, you can see that there is a lot of uh, conflicting uh, uh, interests of many different countries in these regions that, uh, that is causing or using the, the tools of the violence uh, for different purposes. And we are also seeing a movement of recruitment and also returning back of those fighters who are recruited by the different terrorist organizations, whether in the Middle East, whether it is in the Central Asia and other places. So Afghanistan, it is not, it is not uh, the country where uh, we are, uh, we are, there is uh, the base of the terrorist network. We are facing with uh, those elements who are being used by, by those centers, by those, um, uh, by those places where they recruit the, the, the terrorists, they are training them, they are supporting them, they are coaching them. But we are the front line where we have to fight those elements who are pushed into Afghanistan. So that is, that is, that is how the reality of the situation is. So why then, but if, if I may interrupt, saying, uh, why, let, why let then are say, you not able to convince the, the Americans or the international community that the hub of the problem the foundation of the problem is on the other side of your, bo of your border. I think that uh, 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 including uh, uh, yourself and other, all other people, they have to judge by themselves. There is no one in this world that they don't know the reality, they don't understand, and they all have the intelligence, they all have the information, and I think they have to judge by themselves. I will leave that question to the wider audience of, uh, of your television and any other people inside Afghanistan, outside Afghanistan, those people who were responsible for the killing of the international forces in Afghanistan, those who were responsible for the atrocities that is uh, filled by so many Afghans in so many years, in so many different ways. I think that is not uh, hiding questions. And, uh, but, uh, but what I'm, what I'm saying that let's other judge what we are facing. There has been uh, an attempt recently, and I know that your country's ambassador to the U.S. sort of quashed this, an attempt by Pakistan to link what's happened uh, in Kashmir uh, to the Afghan peace process and the drawdown of troops. Would you subscribe uh, to the fact that there is a link, or is this is a figment of the Pakistani imagination? I think people should, um, uh, Afghanistan is an independent country. Afghanistan has its uh, anything that is linked Afghanistan with anything else. It is undermining the sovereignty of the Afghan people in the Afghan country. And I think uh, uh, nobody has the right to link uh, the, the peace in Afghanistan with, uh, with what's happening in the Kashmir. I think uh, uh, the, the government of Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan want peace in everywhere because we are facing, we are suffering and that is how we are feeling that we don't want anyone in any part of the world, including Kashmir or any places, they should suffer. So what I'm, we, we are saying that, that that issue should be resolved in a peaceful manner, and it is an issue between the two countries. It should not be linked with the Afghanistan peace process. Okay, so, so clearly in your assessment, in your view, there is no link between Kashmir uh, and the Afghan peace process. I take that point. I, I just want to talk a little bit about some of these recent attacks and a, and a disturbing trend that seems to have emerged, certainly after the wedding party attack that happened in Kabul, uh, ISIS or Daesh had claimed responsibility. Is there a fear, even if there were to be a peace deal with the Taliban, the bigger worry, the bigger problem for you in the days and months ahead is going to be Daesh and IS, uh, not so much the Taliban? Uh I think uh, uh, this, is, this is something that we are uh, in discussing with our partner, both with our international and we also with our re regional, uh, uh, with all the countries in the region, because if we don't come to a kind of a common understanding, firstly in the region, that the tourists, there is no uh, difference between good and bad tourists. Tourism is tourism that is causing the suffering of everybody. 
Uh, but we are far away from this consensus because there is a different views and there are different world views about the different views. But about Daesh, it is a commonality. There is many old countries in the region, they feel that this is a group uh, which they don't uh, see any border, they don't see any values, they don't see any principles, and they are, uh, and actually that is the extreme uh, uh, level of the, of the tourist networks that is operating uh, in this region. Uh, uh, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, uh, the, this is, uh, the credit should be given to the Afghan security forces and the Afghan people that we are actually fighting on behalf of so many countries against all these atrocities, whether it is Central Asia, whether it is uh, uh, the, any countries in our uh, neighborhood, but actually from where they are getting all these uh, equipment, the weapons, the money, and everything that is coming to them. Sure, but, but more and, specifically, uh, more, if I may interrupt, more specifically, are you worried that, uh, you know, uh, the, the, if, if there are commanders or if there are cadre of the Taliban, who may not agree with this peace deal, if one were to come through, uh, then they could become fighters for IS. And that is as big, if not a bigger problem for you. I think this is a bigger problem for Afghanistan. It is a bigger problem for the region and also for, uh, for the whole of the international community. If that phenomena is not carefully uh, managed, you understood, and uh, the peace uh, process, uh, as, as we said, that we are fully in line with our partners. We are working together. We will be moving uh, together, and I think... Uh, uh, we should not be the victim of the propaganda that is already being underway. And uh, I think uh, the resolve and the commitment of the Afghan government, as I mentioned, the president, the CEO, the, the, the whole of the government is uh, following the same line of the policy in this, uh, in this regard. The U.S. Uh, uh, I, I think president recently said, and this was again, some, some people were surprised, some were not, uh, that oh, not all American troops are going to go back. About 8,600 are going to remain in Afghanistan. What is your view on this? My view is that uh, eventually the Afghan people uh, must take all the responsibility on their own shoulder. We are taking that responsibility, but we are facing with, uh, with a challenge that is not the challenge of Afghanistan. This is the challenge that is brought to Afghanistan. And in order to address that challenge, we will require the support and the cooperation of all the international community, including the U.S. and other uh, countries in the region. Uh, and also in the middle of all of this, the peace deal, uh, the violence, you also have an election, a general election slated for the end of this month. Are you in a position to conduct it in a free and fair manner? I think we will do whatever in our cap capacity and capabilities. We will do it, and we have passed so many different level of challenges throughout uh, the, these 40 years. I am uh, I am confident we will overcome this problem, uh, and we will manage the peace, the election, or the legitimacy, and also the war. Uh, I'm, I'm 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 confident on the ability of the Afghan people. You have seen that. Uh, what, what the attacks that uh, in Kunduz or in Berlin, you saw that the, the people in the, uh, uh, came in the support of the Afghan security forces and within hours uh, they were kicked out of those, uh, those areas. And I think uh, when you compare it with uh, two years back or three years back, uh, it took weeks and in, 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 uh, in, in days but it was a matter of eight to nine hours. All right, uh, last couple of questions. Uh, in your capacity as the head of your country's intelligence agency, the NDS, uh, surely you, you, you've been interacting with uh, the head of the ISI, as indeed with other intelligence agencies. Are you convinced that the ISI or the Pakistan establishment also wants the same objective in your country, and that is peace? <laughs> That is something we are. Uh, we will be discussing more, and there will be many, many more discussion that should happen. And this is an issue that we uh, we have to discuss bilaterally. Uh, and, and, and the other point, of course, the other aspect is that there are about a million. Uh, correct me if, uh, if my figures are wrong, but about around a million refugees uh, on the border between both your countries. Uh, will this peace deal have any bearing on uh, you know the future of these refugees? <sighs> 
I think the most important issue for us is uh, that our uh, refugees uh, are being uh, misused or used uh, in a different way, but uh, we will be more than willing that we create a situation or a situation is created so the refugee, Afghan refugee return with dignity back to our country, but uh, that will require, this is a huge number, and it will require the support of uh, international community, and this is why we should not be the victim of our own people. They have vulnerable and they will be used as a tool in the hand of uh, adversaries. Uh, and just a word on the role of India. India has already committed uh, overseas development assistance uh, in excess of $3 billion. I think outside of the United States and maybe China, uh, it will be one of the largest contributors to the redevelopment effort in Afghanistan. What role do you envisage for India in the future of your country? I think uh, uh, we want to have a balanced relation or a, a, as an independent country, as a sovereign country, we have to have a good relation with all of our neighbors, including India. The historic relation between Afghanistan and India, it is clear to everybody. There is a lot of interaction between the people to people interaction. But at the same time, there is uh, the, the, the uh, people are appreciating the, the development assistance to Afghanistan. And there is a number of very uh, uh, important uh, infrastructure pro uh, project, including the Salma Dam, that has uh, an impact on the economical development of the country or on the, the education education sector. And I think we, we, we hope that uh, all other countries in the region should follow that model of, uh, of, uh, of the development assistance, because that way we will create a, a better understanding between the countries of the region. We want a brotherly relation with everyone. We want to have that relation. We don't want to interfere in the affairs of any country. But unfortunately, I wish other countries had the same motive and the same, uh, the same view that, uh, that they were not interfering in the fears of Afghanistan, in using Afghanistan as a battleground for their conflicting interests. All right. Uh, we, we, know, we all know. Uh, everybody who's watching this broadcast sure knows which country you're referring to. But many thanks indeed, Mohammed Masoom Stanikzai, uh, the Chief of the National Directorate of Security, for speaking with us here on, here on CNN News 18. And I wish you all the very best to you and, you, and to your countrymen and women. Uh, may there be peace uh, in, your, in your country. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.